But I just want you to contemplate for a moment. Do you want to be a hateful person or a loving person? When I grew up, uh, it was a Methodist teaching, and it was sort of dry. Yet there was this prayer, Lord, you know, forgive us our trespasses and forgive us uh, uh, those who trespass against us. And when you opened the door last time to the uh, book, The Course in Miracles, then I came across that principle of the forgiveness and I had a question on that. What is forgiveness? Is it different from compassion? Is it different from the Buddhist concept of bodhicitta? And I don't know. How do I stay in the present moment when it feels unbearable? Forgiveness. What is it? And what should I really forgive? Now, how do I know what to forgive? Well, for that, I feel we first need to see the... I want to start out here by sharing a story with you. Some years ago, I was on the island of Maui and I was giving a talk and I was talking about the truth and I was more specifically talking about how the truth really manifests in the context of life after awakening and what I was saying was what would it be like if we didn't avoid anything we knew to be true? What if we came out of hiding in all areas of our life what if we stopped avoiding ourselves completely? Because that literally is the awakened life. And so I was talking along these lines, and the evening went by, and there was questions, and then the evening ended, and then the next day there was another meeting. And someone raised their hand, a, a gentleman, an older gentleman in his midlife, 50s or 60s, raised his hand, and he said something really beautiful. He says, I was listening to you talk last night about truthfulness and really being honest and a willingness to really face oneself as they are and not hide in some past realization. And he said, somehow it penetrated and I went home. Me and my wife went home. His wife had also come to the meetings with me. And he talked about them going home. And he said, we have been on the edge of divorce for quite some time now. And we went home after we heard you talk and we just sat down and we started to tell each other the truth. We started to tell each other what was true for ourselves. And he said it wasn't like when we used to tell each other the truth, which would be more like trying to convince each other of the truth or trying to pretend that one of us is right and one of us is wrong. He said, this was telling the truth, which is just very simple. It was almost like confessing exactly what we'd been experiencing, what we'd been experiencing for a long time, confessing the fact that we felt separate from each other and distant from each other, and confessing some of the secrets they had kept from each other, which actually were causing them to feel separate and isolated from each other. And he said, we actually just sat there and told each other the truth, he would tell truth, and then he would allow his wife to tell truth, and then he would tell truth and allow her to tell truth. And he said, it wasn't that we were working anything out or trying to come to conclusions. We simply were coming out of hiding. And he said, we literally talked from 11 o'clock at night till 3 o'clock in the morning, which he also said was the reason that he was kind of blurry-eyed and tired at the moment. But he relayed to me that he said it was the most extraordinary evening of his entire life, just that evening of telling truth, not asserting truth, but not denying truth, just simply telling truth in a very sincere way, coming completely out of hiding. But 
what does being honest being truthful to yourself look like real honesty is always not pretending that your feelings are other than they are we know as we deal with situations practically that we may have to do things that go against our feelings and it's the same with helping people when you have to uh, whom you don't like you don't want to help but on the whole uh, it's rather necessary to do so but don't ever be dishonest in playing that your feelings are not what they are got it but what does that have to do with forgiveness what you what you are fee- what what you are feeling this incredible it might also happen if you read about some dreadful crime that somebody has committed and then if you read it on the internet the you can read in some on some news websites you can read the comment section <laughs> and in the comment section on every other comment says we should have the death penalty you need to say electric chair he needs to be done to what he did, did he they should do to him and all these and this is an enormous pressure that people feel inside and this is connected to karmic law <laughs> because there's a compens- compensatory factor in karmic law and you can feel that as the pressure inside you but it keeps you trapped in karma <laughs> so in that sense watching these movies is not helpful <laughs> <laughs> because it keeps you trapped in that that wheel of the, of karma so they don't teach forgiveness there <laughs> so this is we are talking it's about something very important and that is dealing with human unconsciousness and what looks like evil so there are many things that are quite dreadful so how do we how does that affect our state of consciousness and what role does our state of consciousness play in this whole scenario it does have a role to play so to forgive we first need to become aware of the truth by being honest with ourselves i feel when we are honest with our feelings without any judgment it opens up a choice that was never available before a choice to choose whether you want to get into this karmic loop of revenge vengeance or or do you want to be a type of person who deeply understands the challenges of life and the universal dynamics that shape all human behavior and therefore you understand that humans will act out of selfishness and fear and a need for love and out of ignorance and yeah sometimes they'll they'll cause some collateral damage which might be you but is that going to cause you to debase yourself now and to also become selfish as a result or are you going to rise above that which do you choose are you strong enough to love even when others are too weak to love you Or, or are you so weak that you're going to wait for others to love you before you extend your love to them? Are you strong enough to be able to love without requiring your love to be returned back to you immediately? Do you dare to love a person who hurt you? recognize that if you don't forgive this person and this situation right now you are being less than your highest self and that i feel is the only truth that i am really conscious of in my direct experience that's it for this video like subscribe share if you like let me know in the comments below what you guys think i see you guys in the next video